Okay, let's give you a quick little tip about buying and selling and dealing with you know the muscle car industry for example we'll use that now this here is my 71 challenger this car is not for sale this has sentimental value but we'll use this as an example okay guys listen uh we'll talk you know in mopar terms okay for some of you that may know but even you chevy guys four guys you'll you'll get the point if i'm gonna spend time restoring a vehicle sanding on quarter panels you know hanging quarter panels floor pans you know, uh, building motors, rear ends, and transmissions and everything, chances are it would probably be a smart idea that I'm going to do it on a car that is going to be worth more when it's done. We see this all the time. People in the industry, they go out and they want to be a part of it, and they go buy a car they think is cool, and it's really not cool. It's just it's in their budget, okay, which is fine. If you don't care, then you don't care, but I see this a lot. If this car was a 72, three or four Challenger, I wouldn't even look at it, honestly. If I was out and, and I heard of a car for sale and I went to go look at it and I found out that's what it was and it had no sentimental value, I'd pass on it. Because I'm gonna put in the same amount of work in this Challenger that I would a 72, three or four, then I'm gonna put in the 70 or 71, but the 70, 71 is gonna be worth way more money. So if you had the money for the initial startup to buy a car, man, smart move right out of the gate. You know, just bite the bullet, buy something more desirable. Uh, because at the end of the day, the reality is not everybody keeps these cars. We think I'm going to drive this car forever and I'm going to do this and things change. People change. Life changes. Okay. Things happen. You got to get rid of it. And there's nothing that's Harder to deal with that I've seen multiple times is a guy that's put his heart and soul in a car that he got on hard times, he's got to sell it. And in his mind, I'm giving it away, but in reality, buddy, you built the wrong car. It's not desirable. It's not worth nothing. I mean, if, you, if you're a Chevy guy and you're like, man, I'm going to build a Nova, you know, try to roll in a garage with a 69 or 70, not a 74, okay? I mean, that's just a reality. Not that if you like them, you like them, but the reality is they're worth more. And, you know, your shoulders when sanding on a quarter panel doesn't know if it's on a 69 Nova or a 74 Nova. So if you're going to do the work, try to be able to do the work and something that you're going to get more in, uh, in your return investment, okay, for the whole deal. You know, we used to deal with all the time in the motorcycle industry. I'll give you a prime example, and I still deal with this with the car world. Um, people seem to think that the cheaper the vehicle, the cheaper the labor, okay? And that's not how it works. And those people that go out and buy a cheaper car, they learn really quick that the labor's the same. And what I mean by that is guys in the motorcycle world would call me up and, hey, I got a 1980 Sportster that I need worked on. You know, and they tell you the laundry list of all the things and you look at them like, yeah, it's probably going to be $75 an hour. And, you know, you, it looks like you're going to have 30 hours invested in it. And you're like, yeah, but Jesus, just a 80 Sportster. Well, just because it's cheaper doesn't mean the labor's cheaper. It's not my fault. You bought a cheap bike. OK, just like you realize that it is your fault if you did a car that ended up being a lot cheaper for resale, then you realize at that moment, man, I did all that work and it doesn't matter and the car's still not worth nothing. Now, if it's something that you had in high school, if it's something your dad owned or something your grandpa owned and you want another one, who cares? All this is irrelevant, okay? The point is, is if you're getting involved in this, and you're looking for that project because it's that time of the year, my phone's ringing, people are looking for that winter project, you know, to do with their kid or whatever, to be ready for spring and they need motors built and everything. We're seeing this all the time. So if you're gonna spend some time and you wanna get involved and get a project, pay attention to what you're buying. I see this all the time and you wanna try to find something worth restoring, okay? So that's basically the name of the game because like I said, you're gonna have the same amount of much money and effort into it anyway. So I hope this helps out some of you guys getting involved in the industry and some of you guys, you know, that are in the beginning stages of all of this. So we'll be in touch. We'll fill you in on some more ideas and peace out. Talk to you soon.